Hello viewers and welcome to the news for today. I'm William Abba. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending from where you're watching. Heading to the news of today, which says you detain Kanu's release, not judiciary. IPOP leaders cancel, replies Buhari. Aloy Ejimako, special counsel of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, has said that the release of his client lies in the hands of the executive arm of government, headed by the president, Major General Muhammadu Buhari. The Punch had earlier reported that some respected Igbo elders led by the Minister of Aviation in the First Republic, Chief Amechi visited Buhari in Asso Rock in Abuja and requested the unconditional release of Kanu. In response, Buhari had said, you have made an extremely difficult demand on me as a leader of this country. The implication of your request is very serious. In the last six years, since I became president, nobody will say I have confronted or interfered in the work of the judiciary. When Kanu jumped bail, got arrested and was brought back to Nigeria, I said the best thing was to subject him to the system, let him make his case in court. Instead of giving very negative impressions of the country from outside, I will consider your demand, but it is a very heavy one. But Ejimako said, contrary to the statement by the president on Friday, the release of the IPOB leader is not in the hands of the judiciary. He quoted section 174 of the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, noting that the attorney general of the federation, Abubakar Malami, signed has the power to discontinue at any stage any criminal proceedings instituted by him before judgment is delivered. The lawyer in a tweet wrote, Section 174 of the Constitution says, The Attorney General of the Federation shall have power to discontinue any criminal proceedings instituted by him. The unconditional release of Nnamdi Kanu lies with the executive, not the judiciary. Kanu 54 was born on September 25, 1967 at Abia State. He had been arrested in 2000. 17 for demanding the sensation of the southeast zone from the Nigerian state. However, he joined bail in June 2018 before leaving for the United Kingdom, though he said that he fled because his wife was no longer safe in Nigeria. After about three years abroad, Malami at the press briefing in Abuja on June 29, 2021, announced that the IPOP leader was rearrested in a foreign country and extradicted to Nigeria. Edimako has said that the IPOP leader was rearrested in Kenya and dragged to Nigeria. Nigeria. Upon his rearrest and extradition in June 2021, he was rearranged before Justice Binta Nyaku for terrorism related charges brought against him by the AGF office. Kanu has since been remanded in the custody of the Department of State Services in Abuja. Justice Nyaku has adjourned the trial of Kanu to October 21st, 2021, for continuation of hearing, but the trial was adjourned till November 10th, 2021. The case was again adjourned till January 19th and 20th. 2022 for trial. All right, my people, that is it for the news. Well, I think the possible solution to the ongoing problem in the Southeast is for the president to release Mazi Namdi Kanu from detention because that man is not a criminal. He has done nothing wrong for him to be detained to this extent. He has been dragged down to Nigeria for months now and they have been adjoining his case. I don't really know why they are doing such thing. They should release him. His family need him. His community need him. His people need him. Heading to the other news, which is we have approach World Bank for 30 million US dollar loan to build vaccine plant Buhari. The president, Major General Muhammad Buhari, has disclosed that his regime is in talks with the World Bank to obtain 30 million US dollar loan to build a vaccine plant in Nigeria. He said he hoped that the vaccine plant to be built in collaboration with May and Baker Nigerian PLC would commence next year. Buhari, represented by Vice President Yemi Osibanjo, made this known in just on Saturday during the graduation of senior executive course for the three participants of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies. The event was attended by Plateau State Governor Simon Lanlong, the Sudan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar among other dignitaries. Speaking through Osibanjo, the president said Nigeria is in talks with the World Bank's private lending arm and other lenders to raise about 30 million US dollars to help finance a vaccine plant. BioVaccines Nigeria Limited, with 49% of the company owned by the Nigerian government and the balance held by May and Baker Nigerian PLC, plans to begin construction of the plant in the first quarter of next year. The plant will initially fill and finish which means importing the raw materials for the vaccines and then packaging them for distribution, full manufacturing is expected to follow. 
Buari said, but for providence and the good policies of his government, the COVID-19 pandemic would have wreaked unimaginable havoc on the Nigerian economy. He said the GDP constructed to cease to 10% during the second quarter of 2020. The oil price at one point was about 10 US dollar a barrel and then finally settled at about 45 US dollar per barrel during the second quarter of 2020. Unemployment went up to 33.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020. The transportation sector declined by 45%. The hospitality sector fell 40%. The education sector fell 24%. Real estate declined by 22%. Trade declined by 17%. And construction declined by 40%. Nigeria was in terrible economic situation and in response, the president took two swift steps. One was to set up small interministerial committee headed by the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, to quickly work out the implications and the immediate mitigation for the economic shocks we were headed for. The second thing the president did swiftly was to direct a team of ministers and interagency heads to draw up a 12-month economic emergency plan. Earlier, the Director General of NIPSS, Brigadier General Chukwe Meka, said 85 senior executive course participants passed out during the ceremony. According to him, the participants turned 14 states within Nigeria and also visited six African countries and five countries outside the continent in the course of the senior executive course, which began in February 2021. All right, my people, that is it for the news. Well, I think these people have a mission of doing all this, which I believe a true son of the soil will never want to allow his country to collapse with debt. Can you imagine borrowing to buy mosquito net? Now is to borrow to build vaccine company. God in heaven kindly come to our rescue. What sort of country is this? This man will soon come down and leave Nigerians with debts they cannot pay even the next 20 years to come. Graduates do go to bed hungry every day. And can you imagine the president is borrowing such a huge amount of money for vaccine plants? Or got great job for the teaming youths so that they can have bread on their table. The Empower program is just for a year and they return back to joblessness again. When people have jobs and eat well, diseases will not even enter their system. Can't you understand that fact? Don't you know that hunger and dirty around only can even cause more disease than you can imagine? Wait, is there any way to stop these countries from borrowing Nigerians' money? Before the government start tasking us money to reform loan that we don't even know anything about it in some years to come, please, they should stop giving Nigerians' loan. Well, we don't know your thoughts and opinion. We'd love you to share it with us at the comment section below. In case you haven't subscribed, we'd love you to do so. Please click on the subscribe button below so that whenever we drop our content, you will be the first person to get notified. Thanks for staying tuned to this very last moment and God bless you.